Hi everyone, welcome to the Atlanta Voice. We are back in the studios and we have Melody Bray with hey. us today. How are you? I'm doing real well, how are you? I'm amazing. So we're, we have you here today just to talk about your campaign for Georgia State Senate. Just tell us about you first and then we'll kind of go into some of the issues that you're gonna be, you know. Sure, uh, so again, my name is Melody Bray. I'm mm -hmm. running for Georgia State Senate District 38. Uh, that is a huge district. It goes all the way up to Windy Hill, all the way down to the top of East Point. Okay. So you got a little bit of everything going on in okay. there. Um, and uh, our primary is May 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I'm a first time candidate mm -hmm. uh, jumping into this race against a 22 year incumbent. So mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting race to kind of watch if you're starting out in this politics and trying to get educated on what matters and why it matters. Mm -hmm. um, Senate's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been in Atlanta or around Metro Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta since 2004. Okay. Um, I was, I feel like it's a common story that people say they came here just to kind of check it out and then maybe go somewhere else, but somehow they stayed. <laughs> so I came here thinking I'd be, be here. <laughs> exactly. And I'm sure plenty of other folks, I came here thinking I'd be here for maybe a year or two. Mm -hmm. And I'm still here. There's something about this city, you know, right. that I love right. that just kept me here. Now, one of the things that I, I saw about you is that you have a nonprofit. Can you talk about that in, in length and kind of just educate our audience on what that is and what you're doing? Sure. So I co-founded uh, the Georgia 55 Project, and it was in direct response to the voter suppression tactics that were going mm -hmm. on in the 2020 election. Honestly, I wish it was some grand plan that I had to start this. Mm -hmm. What it ended up being was that I was standing in line trying to vote and I was there for hours. Now, where I, was your polling place? Uh, I was up over at Perry Library um, okay. over in the northwest side. Okay, okay. Northwest Atlanta, kind of off of Bolton Road. And um, it was hot. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these seniors in line. It's hot for them too. Mm -hmm. Women with babies. When I finally got a chance to get up there and vote, I called a couple friends and said, we should go to the store and just pick up some stuff right. and help people out tomorrow. Uh, and it snowballed into turning into one of the largest get out the vote organizations throughout that cycle here right. in Atlanta, right. giving more than just food, giving you know voter education, making sure people knew how to navigate this absentee ballot system that we were dealing with, mm -hmm. setting up at MARTA stations, partnering with them to be able to get people to the polls okay. um yeah so in, in in thinking that you needed to just call up a couple of friends and create um just literally organize people mm -hmm. when you decided to do that did you think that maybe this next election cycle oh we wouldn't be able to do this again mm. you know? uh as in did i think that they would shut down the ability a lot, to giving help people <laughs> you in know. the midst of, like, because that's the smartest thing to do. You, mm -hmm. you're, like, you're standing in line and you're thinking about what you personally are having to endure and sacrifice at that time. That's hours out of your day. That's, mm -hmm. you know, you're not eating, you're not drinking something, nobody's offering you anything. And then all of a sudden, now it's against the law. Right. Like, I know you didn't think that in the beginning. Now, of doing that. did I think it was possible? Yes. Oh, wow. Because this is just, I mean, it's just another jelly bean jar, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like there have been historically some crazy hurdles placed in front of black and brown people to be able to vote. Yeah. So if you know that history, mm -hmm. then the idea of writing in a little law about not mm -hmm. being able to eat in line, you're mm -hmm. like, that checks, that, would that be tracks. It. That would be it. Yep. Then and, and, and in regards to this, this election cycle, knowing that you're running, like, are you making it your intention to really kind of not only just educate people on voter suppression, but just kind of showing them like, okay, I'm this everyday person mm -hmm. who decided that I needed to do something mm -hmm. for my district and I decided to use my voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, voter education will always be at the center of what I do. I think that if people understand how our politics work, mm -hmm. how not just as red and blue, Democrat, Republican, but when I am trying to deal with getting my kid education, when mm -hmm. I'm trying to deal with putting food on the table, yes. with filing for unemployment, whatever those hurdles are, if I can connect how politics plays into that, mm -hmm. I think people will be motivated to go to the polls. Mm -hmm. So during the municipal, I wasn't on the ballot, but we were still going around letting people know, hey, we've got a mayoral race right. and it's huge. And the mayor touches so many things mm -hmm. 
that we deal with on a daily basis, mm -hmm. here's how you can get out and here's why you should get out. So it'll always be at the center of what I do. Now, tell me something in regards to voter education, there's there's an aspect where, you know, the generation younger than us, they may feel as if their votes don't count. Mm -hmm. When you're educating them about going out to vote, what is one of your like main points to kind of get them to the polls? Mm -hmm. So I understand, first of all, I understand that frustration. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a frustration that has been felt for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I sit down and talk to those folks, we don't really have the choice. I ask, what is the alternative? Mm -hmm. You staying home, do you think that that is going to get you what you want? Right. This is how the system's set up. Mm -hmm. And you gotta play in order to make change. Mm -hmm. So do not sit on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. To me, sitting on the sidelines is allowing the other side to win without me even putting up a fight. Mm -hmm. So let's let's fight together.